Vandiyathevan hesitated anxiously near the door for some time. Looking at the tigers, he leaped at the guard who was twisting with his hand on his moustache and thought for a moment whether to tie him up and go up. But beyond the tiger cages stood the next door and two guards. One of them signalled this guard by some signal and went away. Maybe they are talking about themselves? Even if you attack and take down this guard, there will be several similar doorways beyond, with guards in them. Can you defeat them all and escape? What if we took a leap and opened the tiger cages instead? Wouldn't it be easier to run away from the confusion? When he thought like this, the guard said, Oko. Do you see that you can escape? Vandiyathevan was startled for a moment after hearing that. One of the tigers growled. Oh dog! Just lie down! The guard shouted. Vandiyathevan laughed when he realized that he was talking to a tiger. The guard looked back. Look back, sir. This tiger is trying to threaten me. I have seen many tigers like this. This lion will not be able to jump, he said and twisted his mustache. Vandiyathevan said, a tiger and a mouse are the same as long as they are in a cage. How will their jumps be? After saying that, he showed the sign of the big farmer in his hand. Go, sir, go. The Prime Minister's men are waiting for you at the door. Go quickly. And saying that, turning to the side they had come from, he said, You fools! Don't be idle! He shouted. At that time Vandiyadeva was holding the madman's hand. Knowing that his hand was shaking, he held it tightly and encouraged himself. Then, past the guard, the two went forward. Freedom, freedom! If everyone is freed, then what will become of our survival? What the guard said fell on their ears. No matter how brave Vandiyathevan was, at that moment his heart was beating buck, buck. He remembered the guard saying that the Prime Minister's men were waiting at the door. It is dark inside the prison. So you can easily trick the guards here and leave. Is it light outside? What happens if the Prime Minister's men discover this defection? But let's see a hand. Be prepared for anything. Fortunately this madman is also a wicked madman, he will lend a hand in time. After passing several gates of the dungeon, they hurried past the gates of the Golden Coinage Road. The guards who were everywhere moved aside when they saw Velar's sign with them. No one doubts them. No peeking. On his way, Vandiyathevan thought excitedly and made a plan. As they were walking in a long room, his companion whispered in his ear, Are you going to the Prime Minister's house? Are you coming with me? He asked. If you go home to the Prime Minister, it's back to the dungeon. I'll come with you. Where do you intend to go? He said. If God has grace, I can go to Ela. In front of the Prime Minister's men, you called me Pinyagapani. Call out. What's your name? Crazy. Real name. The name your parents gave you. Oh that? My parents named me Kariya Thirumal. The villagers called me Karutharuman. That's a good name. Do you think? I'll touch your shoulder as we go through the streets of Tanjore. You must be willing to run with me immediately. You'll run well, won't you? Oh! Not even Mahinda, the noble king, can compete with me in running. Vandiyathevan smiled. You are a good madman. He said. They came out after crossing the gold-coined road. As Vandiyathevan was afraid, the Prime Minister's men were not many there. There were only two people. One of them was a good thug, and Vandiyathevan seemed to have seen him somewhere, sometime, can't remember clearly. You are the Prime Minister's men. Vandiyathevan said. What bro, did you forget about it? Said one of them. No, no. You're going to take us to the Prime Minister's house yourself. Vandiyathevan said. Yes we are. You will even forget the way to the Prime Minister's house. Then Satirai Raman remembered what Vandiyathevan had said, Father, Pinyagapani. I am afraid. 
the Prime Minister will again throw me into the underground prison, or something. He said. You won't do that, Father. You don't seem to know our Prime Minister's Samachar. But don't look just to escape. If you do something like that, we'll end up in the dungeon. He said. After saying this, the fattest of the men walked ahead. Another came as a guard behind Vandiyadeva and Karutharuman. The streets of Tanjavur are not bustling. There is no public transport. After the riots caused by Aditha Karakalar's funeral had died down, the inhabitants of the fort were busy with their duties. Outside the fort, Kajumbalar troops were heavily guarded. No one is allowed to enter the fort from outside. Vandiyathevan walked looking both ways. It is very easy to escape from those two men. But not to get caught again? Want to be comfortable in and out of the castle? With this thought, Vandiyathevan walked along the road staring intently at both sides. When he passed the gate of the palace of the great Palyavetare, Vandiyadeva's excitement increased. Next, the alley is coming. It was the alley where he had once fled from the men of the little Punisher. That was what he was waiting for. There were many nooks and crannies on the curvy axis. There are garden walls on both sides, and trees hanging low outside above the walls, that is where you can run if you run away from these guards. As before, you can jump into the mansion garden with the big reaper. If you jump there, it will be convenient to hide among the thick trees. As before, the exit via the treasure dungeon route is also easy. There is no other way to escape. Here was the alleyway, the way he had escaped earlier. Vandiyadeva thought that he could touch Garatruman's shoulder. But what is this? Who flocks there? Criticisms. Horses. Police officers with hand in hand. They come with so much demonstration. Must be members of the royal family or high officials. Realizing this, the Prime Minister's men looked around. They also noticed the market that caught Vandiyathevan's attention. Immediately they went there and stood aside. They kept the two they had brought behind them, hiding them without the others noticing. The oncoming crowd soon reached the spot and overtook them. A few of the soldiers who had taken up the felt in front, then came the Malay Amman on three majestic white hosts, and the Kajumbalar Vela one in their midst. Vandiyathevan saw that the person who came in the middle was Pawnee's lover. Aha! Uh -huh. How recent is it? But how far has he gone? Vandiyadeva thought for a moment. He quickly changed his mind, wondering if he could run past the guards and stand in front of him. How can Pawnee Selver show mercy to the one accused of killing Tom Ian? Or claim friendship? Even if he feels disgusted at the sight of himself. There is no telling what the Malayans and Velars next door will do. By this time, Vandiyadeva's attention shifted to the Sivakas behind them. Aha! Uh -huh. Younger bratty squats. Vanathi, the princess of Kajumbalar. Sambhavarayar's daughter Manamekalai. Vandiyadeva's chest was heaving. In any other case, you can approach any of these three ladies for help. They will also be willing to help. But, now? How disgusted will the younger Prati and Princess Vanati be when they see the traitor and killer of Aditha Kari Kalan? Let's go. They are taking this evil girl Mani Mikala with them? That's something to be happy about. Did Manamekali tell them everything that happened in Katapur? If she said I killed her to escape herself, would Amathiri have told them too? No, she wouldn't have said that. If they had said that, they wouldn't have taken her with them so much. The Sikhs passed the market where they were standing. The guards who came behind also left. Okay come on. Let's go now said the Prime Minister's men and walked ahead. Vandiyathevan came to the conclusion in an instant that this is the time. He touched Karutharuman's shoulder and ran through the alley. Karutharuman also ran after him. He heard the two guards running behind him. Both of them ran without even looking back for a while. First, the thinker looked back. He said, one is left behind, only one is coming. Vandiyathevan also looked back and saw that Kundan had stayed behind. Even if there was one, 
it would be unwise to stand and fight with him. Therefore, he signaled to Karu Thruman and ran up. He stopped only after reaching the same spot where he had climbed the wall the previous time. The broken and bent branch was still there. Grabbing it, he jumped over the wall. He held the hand of the pregnant woman and lifted her up. Both of them shook the broken branch and cut it off. Then when the next person came near, they pushed him. They jumped from the top of the wall into the garden without even noticing that the branch fell on him. A thick tree bush crept in between them, and stood hidden, staring at the wall. They went up, knowing that no one had jumped into the garden to catch them. Daddy! We survived! Vandiyathevan said. What happened in the meantime? How about getting out of the castle? said the thinker. There is a way, just be patient. Vandiyathevan stopped when he approached the house of Palyavatarayar. The mansion is not as lively as before. Yet there was movement. It is best to enter the Bokairu dungeon during the dark hours. Having decided this, he sat on a log. He also made the council sit. We must start our journey after dark. Until then we can hear your story. He said. That's what I told you before. Then you can't even take yourself out. What would you do if I didn't tell the truth and made up something? Tell me a story any fantasy. It's supposed to be fun for a while, isn't it? Thukuruman began to speak. Indeed it was like a fantasy story full of extraordinary events. 